Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hello there and how are you? This is the voice of victory. I'm Pastor Henry Madawa and I'm coming to you from Kiev, from Ukraine. And you know one thing I like about Ukraine? Ukraine changes so much. I mean every day you hear of something new. But this is what I realized. There's one thing that never changes. God is my loving Father. That never changes. In fact, God never changes. But do you know that my relationship with God can change in the sense that it gets better, it grows, it multiplies. And one of the things that I want always to make sure is changing is my friendship with God. Do you know that God wants to be your friend? He wants, he just, he doesn't just want to be your Lord, your Savior, your God. That's also valid. But God wants to be your friend. In fact, that's the message I'm bringing to you. Friendship with God. Let's listen to this message because it will help you to know that God will stick closer to you than a brother because he wants to be your best friend. Let's watch. The title of my sermon is Friendship with God. The one who finds good and right friends in this life is happy because most of the time your friends will help you more than anyone else. As it is written in Proverbs 18, verse 24, there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. They, friends are very important people. I want to tell you that God wants to be your friend. This is the best friendship, the most influential friendship, the most joyful friendship. And this is the friendship that will help you the most. A certain person who is a striking example of friendship with God, that is Abraham. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. But you, Israel, my servant, God addresses Israel, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. Please notice, God says, and he calls Abraham, my friend. Abraham died a long time ago. Isaac lived after Abraham and Jacob after Isaac. Jacob had 12 sons and they had their children. During a certain generation, they all left Egypt. And now Isaiah tells us about it many years after they left Egypt. Number one, it tells me that there is no more faithful friend for God. And after 30 or 40 generations, a better friend couldn't be found. Number two, for the sake of his friendship with Abraham, the Lord God blesses Jacob. He blesses the nation of Israel after so many years passed by and after Abraham passed away. Genesis 12, 17. Abraham was scared and gave his wife Sarah to the Pharaoh. He just presented his wife to the Pharaoh. But God, being a friend of Abraham, when God saw the stupid action of his friend, you know, the interesting thing is, if God were not his friend, but his rival, he would say, can you see what Abraham did? He gave his wife away. You see how stupid he is. But the Lord is a true friend. 
He came and said, Abraham, it was very silly. We'll get your wife back. It says in Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 4, and also in verses 16 through 33, God is about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And listen to what he says. Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? God feels uncomfortable because he's about to do something on the earth, but he didn't discuss it with Abraham yet. Can you imagine? He feels uncomfortable and says, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? No, I'll tell him. I'll never forget one day, I read in the Bible, in the book of Jeremiah, as far as I remember, when God says, I want to punish the nation of Israel, I will not withhold the punishment. And then, he adds several more phrases. Even if Moses and Samuel stood before me, my mind would not be favorable towards these people. What does this tell us? It tells me that these two men had power to influence God's decision. What is friendship with God? Friendship with God is nothing other than a living, real, and steady relationship. They turn into a friendship with God. All the promises of God, everything God has must in His Word, the authority of the believer, the name of Jesus, and many other things work with one condition. When you have a living and real relationship with God. Consider this. I have a purpose from God. Okay. But I'm not a robot of the purpose. It's not that God set you a destination, then you repented, you stepped in, and went to preach in Kazakhstan and other places. No, you're not a robot. You have a destination from God, that's true. But the plan of God is that you could live in friendship with Him, in dialogue, for everything will be developed only in living relationship with Him. The question arises, how to develop a friendship with God? How can I do it? It says in James chapter 2, verse 23, And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. So why was Abraham called the friend of God? He believed. He trusted God. It turns out that God wants to have a friendship with everyone. And when we trust in God, in accordance with the scriptures, that Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. James chapter 4, verses 7, 8, and 9. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. It turns out that if I'll make steps toward God, God promises that he will draw near to me. The question is, how to draw near to God, right? It says afterwards. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. The first way to draw near to God is to cleanse your hands. As it says about sinners, consider this. It relates to what the person does because his hands are a symbol of the deeds. Number two, it says in the book of James, chapter 4, that we just read, verse 8, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. It turns out that if you want to be a friend of God, He doesn't love the double-minded. So many times He says in the Bible, I could wish you were cold or hot, but please don't be double-minded. God can't tolerate it. 
Uncertainty is the same as to be against God. Because uncertainty will keep you in failure and out of movement and development. Uncertainty is the best method to freeze somebody. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 14 and 15. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. When Abraham became a friend of God, who made the first step into that friendship? Abraham or God? God. God is always the initiator of the friendship with him. So it requires you to live from Him so that we could become friends of God. So that's why I read this passage for you where it says in verse 15, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. It turns out that Jesus suggests friendship to all people. Verse 14, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Number one, the way to friendship with God is the fulfillment of His commands and assignments and obedience to Him. There is nothing else that can destroy your friendship with God more than disobedience, than when you do not respond to His requests. Why all these great men of God were so important to him? Because they were willing to fulfill the assignments of the Lord God more than what public opinion said. One day Jeremiah went to talk to a certain king. They beat him up and put him into prison. The king was against him. The people were against him. Society was against him. But he continued to speak in the name of the Lord. That's why he became the friend of the Lord God. Number two, verse 14. Jesus said, I have called you friends for all the things that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. Revelation makes you a friend of God. The more things are revealed to you, the more the Word of God lives inside of you, the more the principles of God live in you, not in theory, but in practice, the more you are becoming His friend. John chapter 15, verses 12, 13, 17. This is my command, that you love one another as I have loved you. Verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, lay down his life for his friends. Please notice that when you love other people, it makes you a friend of God. How can I know that I love people? It is when I lay down my life for them. To be honest, probably I would sleep right now at this moment. I wouldn't go anywhere. I would eat some food, but I will fast for their sake. I will get up for their sake. I will run for their sake. And number four, it says in verse 16, You did not chose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. When I bear fruit, I am the friend of God. When I bear no fruit in my life, then I am not a friend of God. It says that you should go and bear fruit. God does not tolerate passivity. It is impossible to talk about friendship with God and not mention friendship with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is with us on the earth. This means, number one, you need to spend time with the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 13, the Bible says, I'll start reading from verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, 
When He, the Spirit of Truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak of His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will tell you those things to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take of what is Mine and declare it to you. Consider this. Jesus gave us a lot in the Holy Spirit. But it turns out, that's not everything. For there are so many details and tips that He said. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of Truth, has come, He'll guide you into all truth. Please notice that if I do not live in friendship with the Holy Spirit, it means that I live in a world of limited information. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will bring you more information, say more information. If you want to have friendship with God, it's impossible. Without the Holy Spirit, the fellowship with the Holy Spirit means, number one, to have with Him through the Word of God. When I read the Bible, I want to do it having fellowship with God. Number two, I allow Him to talk to me. Number three, I allow Him to work in you and to change you. Do you know that all of us need some changes? Who can change us more than anyone else and anything else? The Holy Spirit. But when we, him, we quench Him, we grieve Him, He quits working with us. Number four, spend time in prayer. Pray with other tongues. For when you pray with other tongues, then you activate yourself in the Spirit. Pray all the time, and especially pray with the Spirit. Usually I tell him, Holy Spirit, you are the senior and I am the junior. You know everything and I don't know anything. You lead me. Sometimes I even tell him, I want to hug you and you hug me also, please. Everyone can do it at their own level, but please express your emotions toward Him. When God becomes your friend, I mean you begin to see His mighty hand working in your life. Miracles begin to happen. The power of God begins to manifest. Friendship with God will open so many doors for you that you never knew could be opened. Be a friend of God. And you know, that's one of the things that I learned in my life, to be friends with God. I wanted to watch some of these testimonies of what the power of God can do when you take to being a friend of God. Let's watch. Four years this lady uh, spent her time in bed because she couldn't walk. And during the prayer she felt some kind of fire in her legs. After that she stood up and started walking. Okay, this lady was in bed, lying in bed. For how many years? Since last four months, they are For four months. And, what, and you were lying in bed. What happened today? As you said, those who are not be able to walk, yeah. and she stood up and she started walking. So she just stood up, she was lying on the bed here. Yeah, yeah. No, no, she was sitting on the chair. She was sitting on the chair. Yeah. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Benjamin, what happened here? When she was nine years old, when she, she was nine she, years old, she had a in, uh, she had a injection in her knee, and that caused the problem, and that made a pain all over her knee, and she couldn't walk without any pain. Now she can walk, and there is no pain. Hello. What's your name? You don't, you don't feel any pain? And this was because of an injection? 
When she was nine years old, she was she had a fever, high fever, and then because they gave some injection and reaction uh, happened, that's why won't be able to walk. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What happened here? Let's last, quickly. last year, this lady fell on her shoulder and couldn't leave shoulder or arm. Now she okay. can move her arm uh, and shoulder. Can you move your arm? Just move it. Good. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Pastor, three months, this man couldn't walk by himself because of paralysis on the legs. And today, when you pray, he didn't believe in God before. He but he believe. saw the past pastor and came and believed in God and now he can walk by himself. I want you to walk with me. Now, Mumbai, this is the good shepherd. He came to people like him. Now, what's your name, sir? I want aapka, you to look naam kya hai? What's your name? Good. So what was your problem? Aapki samasya kya thi? You could not walk on your own? Maradi. Tumhi chalu shakat nauta jama? Haan, chalu shakat nauta. Haan, tumchi samasya kya hoti? Problem kya hoti tumhala? Okay. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want you to give me your hand. Don't worry. Okay? Walk with me. This man was paralyzed. I want you to turn. Turn with me. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Good. Let's go. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes. He's doing it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Free. मुक्त हो जाए, heal, चंगे हो जाए, in Jesus name, यीशु के नाम में, by the power of God, परमेश्वर की सामर्थ्य के द्वारा, let's keep going, don't be afraid, यहाँ पूरे चालत रहा, चालत रहा, भीड़ का भीड़, I'm where you, I'm very close to you, अरे मैं तुमसे बरोबर आया हूँ, तुम्हारा पढ़ो देना नहीं खाली, I'm right here with you, मैं तुमसे बरोबर आया हूँ, मैं, the man is walking, और आप चल रहे हैं, praise the Lord, प्रभु की स्तुति हो, I was in an Assemblies of God church in Zimbabwe. We tried to cast out a demon. It didn't leave. <laughs> I took this girl with a demon to a church close by an Assemblies of God church. I thought, well, the pastor is spirit-filled. He will pray and the girl will be delivered. When I came to the church, the pastor prayed, just like I had prayed before that, and the demon did not leave. I was baffled. How can that be? So the pastor said, okay, wait a minute, Mr. Madava, I will call somebody. And he called one of his deacons. When the deacon came, well, he, he didn't look very nice. He wasn't nicely clothed. He was very kind, very polite, but he was kind of shabby. He said, pastor, why did you invite me? He said, oh, we've been trying to cast out this demon. It's not living. So this a deacon who wasn't very nicely dressed turned to the girl with the demon and said to the demon, not to the girl, he said to the demon, Demon, I give you five seconds to leave. And he looked at his watch. He said, One, two. When he said three, the demon was gone and the girl was free. I looked at him, his clothes. I looked at the girl. She was free. And I was, I said, Wow. So I offered to go with this man to his house, or at least talk to him along the way. So I said, how did you do that? He said, the key is, be a friend of God. And I took that from that day. I made it a life mission to be friends with God. If you want God to be your friend, you need to be saved. You need Jesus in your life. If you want Jesus in your life, Say with me, Heavenly Father, forgive me all my sins. Give me a new life. Change my life forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I want to pray for you. Number one, I want to pray for you to receive your miracle. Lay your hands wherever you are sick. 
If it's your finances that are sick, lay your hands on your whatever, your pocket or whatever you have. In the name of Jesus, I break the spirit of sickness and disease. I command it to leave. And that spirit of pain, go. Paralysis, you leave. Every sickness from the top of your head, the bottom of your feet, I say, go now in Jesus' name, now. And I speak to the finances of everyone who is in need. I say, be healed. Poverty, go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your miracle working power. And I pray, Holy Spirit, fill them, draw them to God so they can be friends of God. Well, may God bless you. He's such a wonderful Savior. He loves you. Be his friend. You will never regret it. He will bless you out of your socks. I mean, it will be so much, you won't be able to, you, you will be so amazed when you become his friend. May God bless you as you become a friend of God.